Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, we're going to be checking out Big Man Takes on Islam Korean 4K. Guys, let's go straight into this. Yeah, and this is what makes Islam's Quran voracious compared to any other book. And we have a three pronged approach in which we prove the veracity of the Quran. Number one, the Quran has been preserved orally. Number two, it has been preserved by a live language. And number three, it has been preserved by manuscripts. Now, what I mean by that is if you compare all of the religions, Stephen, for example, let's look at the New Testament of the Christians. It's revealed in, well, Jesus spoke Aramaic, so who knows, but I mean, they're saying it's in Greek. Is Greek one of the top five languages? Is it spoken generally? No. Let's look at Hebrew of the Old Testament. Is it spoken generally? It's not. Let's look at Sanskrit of the Hindus. Is it spoken? Is it accessible? It's actually not accessible. Jesus' language of Aramaic is actually not accessible. Let's look at Arabic. It is. It's actually at number four or number five. It's actually, it actually fluctuates. It's a live language. <laughs> Anyone can make someone Muslim, but keeping someone Muslim? That's where the main job is. And when you contribute to someone learning Islam, you not only get the reward of everything they do from that point onwards, but what their kids do and what their kids do and so on. It is the best kind of investment a person can make. So help the scores of people that have accepted Islam in Africa, protect them from these missionaries and these liberals by clicking the link below. Let's look at manuscripts. Muslims are the only ones who claim to have manuscripts of the original Quran. And we make the claim it's the same book that was there at the time of Muhammad, peace be upon him. Could you say that within the language, with a definitive fact, that there's never ever been even a slang word introduced in uh, that language ever? So there's never been an abbreviation ever in that language? That's because I have a friend who's from Miami and he's Cuban and I travel around the world with him. And he speaks Spanish, but his Spanish, and this is what he says, he says, when he, the further south, it's a Spanish, but it's a totally different Spanish. And it's yeah. different to the Spanish, what is spoken within Spain. So could you say with 100% clarity, and I do understand this, I have read that, that in order to preserve um, Islamic practices or the faith, that you, you read the, the Quran so that you, you know it word by word, help pre preserve that. But can you say that there's no difference ever? There's never ever been even a, a different vowel or word or pronunciation or one bit of slang in that language? Very good. Not one. And that's why, Stephen, I'm giving a three-pronged approach. Number one is the living language Arabic. Let's keep that to the side by now, yeah? Because Arabic itself is accessible to everybody, no worries. Brilliant, fantastic. Manuscript evidence and verbal evidence. Now, when it comes to something verbal, now, can you verify that since we've been here, the crowd has changed? There are brothers that have come and some brothers have gone and some brothers I don't know here, yeah? Now, I can tell you confidently, I can read a passage of the Quran, I can introduce something in this passage in front of you and they'll be able to correct me. Qul huwallahu ahmad. Is that right or wrong? Qul huwallahu ahmad. Is that right or wrong? Qul huwallahu ahmad. Right or wrong? Wrong. What's the correct one? Qul huwallahu ahad. Qul huwallahu Qul huwallahu So verbal preservation it's, this is a beautiful way in which the Quran is the only book that claims perfect preservation. In fact, in the Sunday, in the Sunday Times, there was a poll that was done in 1997 of vicars. They asked vicars to regurgitate the Ten Commandments and two out of three vicars struggled. Now, these are a few lines, but when it comes to the Quran, I think it's like 9,000 or 11,000 lines of the Quran, depending on you know how big the size of the Quran is. You've got Muslims as young as six in Palestine. There was a girl as young as six that has memorized it. And just like I've proven to you here, Stephen, my friend, this is why Islam is special because Islam or the religion from God naturally is supposed to be accessible to everybody. I can't give a highfalutin uh, argument that, you know, us academics can understand, but somebody else would struggle. It needs to be something that a rational individual can come and go, you know what, that makes sense. So in terms of a live language, 
we've proven that, okay, the Quran is something that's special. In terms of manuscript, the oldest manuscript that we have is actually located in this country, in Birmingham. It's, it's actually four folios. You can Google this when you go home. It's a BBC article. It's actually one of the top three when you Google it. Oldest Quran manuscript. It's in this country. It's not even a Muslim country. Birmingham and the carbon dating was actually done by the University of Oxford. They've carbon dated it. And you can check, I've got cameras here. Everything that I'm saying, you can go home and you can check it. So it was carbon dated and they did exactly what you said. They put the Quran that we have and they compared it with the folios. And Stephen, me standing here, without a shadow of a doubt, I'm telling you the founding that they found from, I think it's 645. 645 AD. They said there is a hundred percent word accuracy. You can check this yourself. That's the oldest manuscript. You know what I've done? I've actually are you happy, it are you happy that it's, that manuscript is in the UK? Do you know why I am happy with that? Is because some people, when I'm speaking to them, Stephen, when I ask them, where do you think this manuscript is? Oh, it's probably in a Muslim country. Oh, it's probably you guys are probably saying this and it's probably done by your guys. The fact that it's in a non-Muslim country, I think it objectively is in favor of a true seeker. It makes it easier for them to distinguish and say, you know what? Okay, I can accept that. But now, let me ask you, Stephen, what do you think about these things that I've told you about how the Quran has been preserved as opposed to the other books? What do you think about what I've just said? I think that's a, I, I, I took note of that, the fact that I've already acknowledged the fact that when you sh when you got these three brothers here and you uh, use the whatever um, a verse of the Quran, person, yeah. and they were able to repeat that. Yeah, so brilliant. that preservation is there. So, uh, I think it's, it's a fact that the Quran was up in. Yes. It has been memorized. And I've actually, actually researched about the preservation of the Quran. And there are some things to it, but not just say it. But it has been preserved in. Okay, since it was collected, it has been preserved and read. Oh, it has been preserved and read since then to date. And see, when he it when the book was collected, it was then like they made copies of it and still the same book. Like they didn't change a word or or anything like that. But based on Christianity, I feel. Christianity have also still be preserved because if I don't think I'm gonna come up to it now, but if you check about Christian manuscripts like dating way way back to 2000, I think I think 2000 or 1000 something AD, yes, you are gonna see some manuscripts that actually still match the same thing written with the Bible, so. Those are based on translation, that's why you see the Bible being different, but it all came out from the same manuscript. But guys, tell me what you think about this video. Just to like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.